All right, we are Zooming following a postseason matchup in Region 5A. Green Run defeated Kempsville tonight 57-47, to and I'm pleased to be joined by Green Run assistant basketball coach. He's often referred to as the associate head coach by the head man, Kenneth Harris. We're talking with Roderick Cooper, class of 96 Green Run High School. No, Coach Harris is not sick. I don't want to get people alarmed. And um, B, we're just giving him a night off because he's exhausted and tired and we do this enough with him anyways. But uh, Coach Coop, thank you for stopping by. We spoke with your son, Jacob, a little while ago. And we'll talk about him and your other son, Trey, in a little bit. But uh, got to be pleased to get a win. And, and this time of the year, it's always survive in advance, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's just really what the off season is about, is to prepare for these times. And, um, you know, with the COVID situation, you know, it kind of, you know, shut us down, you know, because our off season is – it's pretty hectic, but you know, with these these guys have it in them. They have it in them to to persevere. Well, let's just spend a moment on the game, then we'll get to your background and what's up ahead for you all. Uh, Thirty four points from your son Jacob Cooper, the reigning Class Five State Player of the Year. He was twelve of twenty three from the floor, nine of twelve from the foul line. He had about six, seven, eight rebounds, mixing up with the bigger guys as well. And Kempsville, you know, Darren Sanderlin from his days at Booker T. Washington. His guys are going to be motivated and play hard. And I thought. Green Run, kind of that name now across the state. I know you take part of it being a former player. It brings out the best in some teams, and it certainly did in Kempsville tonight. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, that's that goes back, like like you said, to, you know, not even before me, actually. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, that's that's kind of the motivation every going into the season every year is that, you know, we got that bullseye, rather, whether we are good or okay or great, we're going to have to play or we're going to get somebody's best every night. You were a good player back in your day, but um, Jake can take you now one-on-one, -on -one, can he? Be honest. Uh, Jake, I mean, that's been years. That's been years. That's been years. Last time we played, he was um, – I think he was a freshman or going into his freshman year, and um, I beat him in the front yard. And that summer, I, I knew it was, it was over. It was over. It was done. I mean, he stopped whining. He stopped letting me get away with stuff. And, you know, Father Tom gets us all. It does. At what point in his – any journey, can be younger before he got to high school, during this high school career at Green Run, did it kind of hit you like, man, oh, man, th this young fella can be one of the best players, not just in Green Run, in Virginia Beach, but in, in the state? Um, I've – I have always been a little biased about Jake. I'm going to be honest. He's uh, – since, you know, he started off playing football. Okay. And he, um, you know, his, his first year actually playing football, he played flag, and <clears throat> he was the youngest kid in the whole league. They actually made me sign a waiver for him, and I was the same for soccer. But after a, a day of practice, it was always Jake coming home with the playbook all the time. Like, he's always been – that guy, I'm gonna be honest with you. And um, but when I I think probably when um probably roughly around his sixth grade year, you know, he started to not take criticism like uh like it was something negative. You know, it, it became like, okay, well, I'm gonna use every everything somebody tells me or everything that I respect coming from somebody that I respect. Um I'm going to use that and I'm going to sharpen up my game. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I tell people all the time, probably from for the past maybe 10 years, he's been in the gym pretty much five to six days a week um, up until this COVID situation. So probably roughly around right when he was approaching middle school. And then we actually had a, a bump because he was uh, <clears throat> where we were living at at the time. It was like right on the borderline of Lansdowne and Green Run. Uh, but he ended up going to Lansdowne and he ended up getting cut. So that was the sixth grade year. And, uh, you know, it was a wake-up call. And ever since then, he's just been like, you know, that's not going to happen to me again. And, Dad, I can, you know, he, he's asked me before, like, Dad, you think I can be the, the best point guard in the state? I was like, honestly, I think you could be the best point guard. We were. What was that? You were bringing up at the end there, best point guard? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I've always felt that he was just the best point guard. Mm -hmm. I mean, he does everything. He really does every single thing. He can score. He plays D. He talks. He's a leader. He's a warrior. I don't see him get his teeth knocked out and keep playing. So, you know, like I said, again, roughly around his middle school, 
that time, seventh grade, it was not thought that he could be the best. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know how this playoff is going to end for, for you guys or any of these teams. We all can guess and predict, but I think it's tonight's game is going to leave us with the way he had that third, fourth quarter, refused to lose. I'm not going down. A lot of the great point guards you named on the list of all of them have come through. And your runs had some special players over the years. I mean, we'll get to a couple you played with, but you think of B.J. Jenkins and you think of Tyler Blunt as a shooter and you think of the late great Ashley James. And he kind of had that I'm not going down tonight uh, mentality. And I, I got to give you props to this too because you were one of the people that put me on notice early along with, and I've still got this with Coach <laughs> Uh, Harris at Greenland and also Dwight Robinson at Lanstown, that young group, the Reapers, with right. Jake and Elijah Kennedy, who I know you, you treat like a son as well for you. You're really close with him and yeah. Donald Hand Jr. I mean, yeah. people can pick a team in the state right now, and you can pick a lot of different guys. You can go with Tyler Nickel at East Rockingham, Dennis Parker Jr. at John Marshall. You can go with Jay Nepps at Kings Fork. It's a list of a bunch of fabulous players across the state. But on that list of the among the best, you're going to pick those three guys very early on that list for sure. Oh yeah, uh, Kenyon um, is it? Giles, yeah, Oscar Smith, Kenyon yeah. Giles, and Oscar Smith. He was another one that was on that mm -hmm. on that team that we had uh, when they were young. Um, and he could play. play. <laughs> yeah, and you know, you know, and circumstances kind of broke us up a little bit, which you know. But you know, I'm not gonna hold that over your head, Hatfield. I Man, I did tell you so. You know, maybe you'll listen to me next time. I will with the next up and coming. We'll keep that on <laughs> notice for now. We'll make sure we look, put the people Absolutely. out there yeah. when it's. I'll get, you get first dibs. I appreciate you get that. First dibs. Let's um let's go back to though when you played, and we'll fast forward to the current times in a moment. Um, when you played at Green Run, 90, now you were a teammate of Plaxico Burris, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. When you played for uh, a man that just retired here recently, we all uh, love there. Mark Butts, I think, was your coach. Is that right? Yep. Um, mm -hmm. tell me what it was like then and how different is high school basketball now when you look back on it to to then. Um, I think it's, it's, it's way more structured now, okay. um, and it's definitely more of a family. Uh, with the AAU stuff, you know, we – I mean, there were – honestly, probably from March until – I didn't see my, my teammates until, like, November um, back in the day. You know, I played outside, and I played a little bit of AAU. Um, I actually made a boo team uh, – long time ago, ages ago, but, um, you know, it wasn't that, that cohesive net that you got, that, that you see now. Um, but, you know, the other thing is that is, I, I think that the fact that it wasn't so many high schools that you could get two or three really, really good players on a, on a team. Um, and, but, you know, when you open up Ocean Lakes and, uh, last town, you know, everybody kind of gets spread out. So that's kind of the, the major difference. But the structure and the, like, I never got ball. I never got a ball screen. I didn't get a ball screen until I was probably <laughs> playing in adult leagues in my mid twenties. So you know, it was always you know break the defense down, break the defense down. Now you know you can just manipulate the a defense so much, you know. And then on top of that, lastly, you didn't have a lot of scoring point guards. Uh, I felt like I could score, but I, you know, I enjoy pa passing and, you know, butts, you know, he wanted me to pass that ball. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's interesting. And one of my buddies who's in the NBA involved in a front office standpoint always tells me that um, basketball back then, if you remember the old, I'm a diehard Stockton Malone jazz fan, those jazz bulls and some of those, even you go back even before the bad boys, Pistons, the Knicks rivalries with the heat, the pace of play, I think at all levels, pro college, high school, and even with the, you know, uh, explosion of AAU has changed so much where right. people say that they watch those games back in the 90s. Now it's like, I can't watch that. It's, it's different. Is that kind of how you feel to a degree? Or do you say, no, nah, it still was, it was physical. It was hard nosed. It was just as good, if not better. Um, I actually enjoyed both. You know, I was a huge Michael Jordan fan. Um, so I, I mainly only really paid attention to him, you know, Tim Hardaway, those type of guys. But uh, the pace is definitely different. Um, you know, you had to run certain offenses, you know, uh, back then. Um, now it's just, you know, the guys are so much more athletic, you know. I, I, my high school, uh, my senior year, we were big. We were super big. But um, but we played a little gritty, but, like, you know, the way Elijah plays and the ball screen stuff and the, the stuff that Jake does with the ball is just – you know, we would have had a hard time covering both of them guys. 
<laughs> like your senior year, you guys was that the year you knocked off undefeated Mori in the playoffs in the regionals, or was that your junior? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. We um we actually knocked off Nazar River that year too. They were number one. Uh, Antoine Willie, uh, those. And he was the score for those who don't know. He put up uh, a lot of people points. know about that Antoine Willie guy. Yeah. Um, and they had another big. Uh, I think his last name was Valentine. Okay. Um, but we played um first game of the season, Time Mark Classic, and um, we ended up. I um, actually got in the paper that night. You know, I still I still hold that over Jake Ed too. But you know, he <laughs> his 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 clippings definitely outweigh mine. But um, but yeah. Yeah, that was that was a that was a good year. And you were a team at Plaxico. Any mm-hmm. favorite memories of that? Uh, maybe a game of your career, or and did you know Plaxico would be what he would be? Where he's catching the people forget this. They were talking about Tyree with the helmet catch and Eli with the drive. That's the guy from Greer and High School, folks, that caught the game-winning touchdown pass in Super Bowl forty-two against the undefeated, unbeatable Tom and the Patriots. Me and uh, Plax grew up together in um, you know snotty nose, you know level and. Uh, Plex, his ego was so big that you, it, it, I expected it. You know, he, he, you couldn't tell him he wanted the best. And honestly, he played point up until probably his 10th grade year. Wow. He played point guard. So I had to cover him in middle school. It's a scary um, thought. Scary. But he was about six feet. And then probably around eighth grade, he, he, he jumped up. Uh, but yeah, there was some. There was a lot of good times. There was a lot of funny times. I mean, Plex is a really funny guy. But um, probably, probably the, the the biggest memory. Uh, I mean, we had a lot of rivals with Cox. Um, but um, I don't know. He uh, probably that Nazareth River game, the Nazareth River game, where that we were actually down, and we went in the locker room, and it was just we just banded together, and uh, we came out, and um, you know, shot the world pretty much. Um, so, you know, but that that was a fun group. Something about the Stallions and Nans River in big games, as we know, a couple years oh, ago. Oh, no doubt, no doubt about it. No doubt, no well, doubt. Well, I, I don't want to get you in trouble in the doghouse, but let's. The, I guess the best memory, probably from your, your, you married your high school sweetheart, who is your wife now, and Jake and Trey's mom, uh, Kelly, I believe her name is. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you, you've grown up Green Run, and that's been in your family from day one. It still is to this moment. Absolutely, yeah. Um, we are Stallions. That's for sure. Uh, my brother went um, to Green Run, and that's all I knew. You know, running around that neighborhood, running around uh, Buckner and all that stuff, and riding my bike all over the place. And you know, that's it. It, it always felt like home. Um, even when I, you know, after high school, I really didn't have nothing to do with any high school, like basketball, sports, or anything. I actually. I actually, my first time going back was watching um, Gilchrist play Green Run. Okay. I kept hearing about his name, and I had I had known Gilchrist when he was little from playing outside of like Bayville and places like that. And um, I heard about him, and I ended up going back, and I realized, and then that's why I actually realized that the, the football team hadn't won in years or whatever it was. Yeah. The basketball team was kind of like, yeah. so, you know, right after that, I actually went back and um, got my teaching degree, and that's when I met Coach Harris. Okay, well, let's get to that because people know Green Run had a really storied history in the 80s. Bill Cochran was there. They won a regional championship, and you guys got your first in 37, 38 years from a regional title perspective last year. You're going for a second one this coming Saturday against Salem at 12 noon at Kempsville High in Virginia Beach. People can't come from a fan perspective, but they can watch on the NFHS network. So hit some lean years. Mike Head and Mark Butts had some good years. Then the mm-hmm. program hit kind of rock bottom. Mm-hmm. Ed Young gets there. They win 18 games with B.J. Jenkins and Hitman Latay Darden, but Ed bolts for Nance and River. And then a few years later, Coach Harris arrives, and I guess you got there. What got, what drew you into coaching? And tell me about the relationship you guys have formed to where good first year, a couple of rocky years out of that. But since that point, the last 10, 12 years, Green Run wins about as many games as anybody in the area in the state. Um. Yeah. Uh, I actually uh, went back to school um, – I was a FedEx driver, and I just didn't think that. <laughs> I got so sick of dr- jumping out in and out of that truck in the wintertime and the summertime. And um, So your advice to those coaches that want to pick up a part-time job right now, you would suggest Uber over FedEx right now? That would be correct. It definitely don't do it during the holidays. Um, but I actually, uh, I actually decided to go back, and um, I started subbing. 
while I was at when I went back to ODU. So I was working FedEx. I was subbing on my days off. And um, a coaching, the coaching position actually came up while I was in Green Run one day. And some of my old teachers, uh, Mr. Jacobs, they were like, man, Coop, you should take it. You should, man, they were, you, and, but yeah, I was, uh, I was substitute teaching. And, um, and like I said, Coach Harris had just, I mean, like the day he got the job, mm -hmm. he actually was walking down the hallway and, um, you know, I just hear a voice in the back behind me asking me, if, you know, is my name Coop? You know, cause you know, a couple of, I guess the, a couple of teachers had said that, you know, I was in the building and. He'd be a good resource. You know, he played, you know, back in the day and, you know, very humble guy. Um, and at first, I'm going to be honest with you, he he convinced me to coach. If it, was, if it, if it wasn't for Coach Harris, I would have never coached. So you had some people saying that you should go to be the head coach, assistant coach, or what was kind of the – Well, yeah, they were they were trying to uh, promote me and – well, the teachers, my, my mm -hmm. former teachers. Okay. That were still there. Um trying to convince me to do it um and you know I, I just wasn't I didn't I wasn't I didn't think I could do it honestly it just it just really wasn't a it wasn't something that I wanted to do you know I was still playing at the time and um ironically I was actually helping out um Tyler Blunt he was I want to say Tyler was about nine at the time Okay. And his dad and another uh, family member of mine were coaching them in a rec league. Okay. And believe it or not, to, to make that story crazy, I ended up helping them, and we beat Mark Hall and Devin and Devin Hall in the championship. How about that? How about that? Devin Hall and Mark Hall, who had a decorated career in basketball, football, How about that? football, at UVA. That is a neat story. So mm -hmm. you kind of had the itch still as a player, though. You really hadn't yeah. told yourself you were you were getting. Yeah. Which a lot of former players do, and I, I get that. Um, you, your first year, you guys lose to Bethel in a heartbreaking double overtime region playoff game. Then you guys miss the playoffs for a couple of years, and people are like, mm -hmm. what's going on around here? But you guys got things on the path, like I said, start winning a lot. And could, if you had someone had told you then, all right, this program will win a state championship play in three consecutive region championship games and – be the consistent model that it has been. I mean, pretty much every year it's it's Green Run and Lancetown competing at, at a high level to win and, you know, contend for regional and now in the case of state championships. So, I mean, it's mm -hmm. – did, did you expect that? Were you surprised? And do you look back at it as, as a turning point? I asked this to Coach Harris during the summer. Was there a kind of a turning point? Um, Honestly, when me and Coach Harris's relationship became more personal, it was the turning point. Um. It was first, it was just, you know, I'm just kind of helping him out. And we didn't agree on a few things. Mm -hmm. And we started kind of hanging out, you know. He was a country guy. Real, real, um, very few words. And, you know, on the basketball court, I was a little bit more energetic. Um, and once we started hanging out and started talking, it was more like a, it just became a bond. And... Honestly, it just it just started to work. It just, you know, I he had what I didn't have and I had what he didn't have. Right. And so it just kind of connected. And then, you know, Mark Hall actually helped that out as well. You know, we were, you know, we I, I actually I'll tell you just real quick. Um we were getting our head beat in by um oh man, maybe it was PA. Um, but Mark was like a freshman. Freshman, he just moved up from JV, mm -hmm. and I was like, "Man, what's the point? We need, you know, we might as well start playing the young guys." And he looked at me, he said, "Man, you're right." So we just started playing those young guys, and I'm gonna be honest with you, that was probably the moment that Green Run changed because Mark, the following years, you know, he got good, and then we got a couple of other players, then you know, we had Laquan Thomas kind of come out of nowhere, who, who I knew personally. Mm -hmm. And then Tyler came and then, you know, Jamal and those guys, and then Sterling and, you know, it's kind of went from there. Yeah. And, and I think that that's the meshing point. And with all winning programs or franchises, if you go to the professional level for sports, when it kind of goes from this is a team to its family, you hear that's cliche, but I think that's where it becomes that they win. You know, it's yeah. you guys did get beat in a couple. I remember Andre Dawkins, Stephen Pledger, Lance Shores beat you. 
<laughs> pretty handily. And Annandale in our Virginia Preps Classic that year had a pretty darn good team and almost knocked off Norcom that won back-to-back state titles. Um, for you, has it been – how would you describe the the fathers? Now you got two playing. You're not just Jake as a senior. You got Trey, who is a freshman. The father son coaching is it hard? I hear it from a lot of coaches that you know on the bench it's tough when you're in the stands and you're and you've been a coach. You're not coaching. It's even more challenging sometimes. How has that been? And prefer the method. It's kind of a multi part question here. As an assistant, not being the main voice there, you can kind of sometimes step back a little bit. Well, I'll start from there. I mean, Coach Harris. Um, he pretty much, you know, we do it. He He's the guy. And I respect him a lot because he doesn't let his ego get in the way. You know, he wants to win. He wants to build better men. And, you know, he wants to build a program. So, you know, he allows me to give whatever I have to offer to the, to the situation. So that's kind of easy um, for as Jake and, you know, I'll now start with Jake. Um, I never let him call me dad or pops or anything in practice. So it was, you know, it's, it, it can be tricky, but, but there is a mutual respect there. You know, I respect him as a player. He respects me as a coach. When we come home and he don't do the dishes, yeah, that's something different, you know, but that's completely separate. Um, but I mean, it, it can be, it can be a little tricky because, you know, I'm so passionate about winning and, you know, any, but anytime I see him kind of, you know, goofing off or something, sometimes daddy stuff come out, but I mean, but I still have to be able to tone it down and, um, you know, it just works for us. Uh, He wants to win. He has to Trey as well. You know, we all had the same goal. We want to be better and we want to win. So it's, it's, it's the, the transition is, you know, it's kind of simple. Um, there have been times, there have been times when I've seen, um, you know, maybe he took an extra hit in practice that he probably shouldn't have took that, you know, I had to kind of count to five, you know, as a dad, and, you know, the dad wants to come out. Right. You know, but, you know, I just kind of chalk it up, you know, that's just going to build some toughness. I've heard this too from other uh fathers that are coaches with their sons or daughters that when you have multiple when you have two sons or two daughters or three in some cases that they get better the second third go around has the experience with Jake helped you as Trace gets ready to embark on this journey and then also to follow up with that getting a chance to coach both of them during this COVID year where it looked like in December let's be perfectly frank you weren't going to have this opportunity this season yeah um it's definitely it's definitely it's, it's definitely helpful um you know I've probably been um, over uh, what's the word? Maybe overzealous at times with 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 Jake um, because his personality is very similar to mine, very similar. So I know when he's doing something, I can I know you know when he sees something on the court, you know I see it too. I may see it a little bit different, but I still see it and. Um, uh, but like I said, our personalities are very similar when it comes to basketball. Um, Trey, on the other hand, he's more he, – actually, Trey's more of a coach. Trey is very – as a player's coach. He pays attention to so much detail. Um, so I I probably wouldn't have to even yell at Trey as much as I would have to yell at Jake um, because, like I say, he's, you know, kind of different-minded. But definitely have, you know, given me some um, – assistance with bringing up Trey second, dealing with Jake, for sure. Jake's very strong will. Uh, as we see on the court, and it, and it helps lead his team to victories there. Uh, last two, and I could spend all day with you. We've been almost 30 minutes, and this has been a real joy. And I, we had the one little small, small snap through this, but this has been fun. Um, for, for you, too, I know that this, you know, winning the championship matters to you guys to try to get back to back. But how much is the, is the joy, you know, regardless if you win this or not, just getting this to have these moments – that you can always look back on and cherish. It's funny. I've been looking on, you probably have too on YouTube lately. They have a lot of the old archive games from, unfortunately, when you guys played Virginia Beach, but a lot of the Hampton schools, teams, other schools around the state. So, I mean, these are priceless moments you can look back. I know five, 10, 15, 20 years from now as a family and as a father, coach, you know, former player that you'll probably say, wow, this is pretty neat. Uh, is is actually overwhelming at times. Um, you know, I'll, you know, we have a smart TV and, YouTube will pop up and, you know, Jake's mixtape would just be all over. I mean, it'd be all over the feed. 
and, and it's, it's, it's kind of weird, but, um, you know, I had to get used to that. You know, it is a level of celebrity that, you know, I had to prepare him for. I didn't know it was actually going to be this kind of, you know, level, but, um, um, I was, you know, groomed early, um, by a couple of coaches and, you know, one of the main things they were, you know, they used to, they used to tell me was make sure you enjoy your son. Because, you know, up until probably around his, I don't know, mid ninth grade year, freshman year, you know, I was just constantly pushing, you know, work on your stuff, you know, work on this and grades and blah, blah, blah. And I didn't really get a chance because, you know, I coached him at AAU as well for a little while. And there were times, you know, he played for Loaded and he played for Boo that I was able to enjoy. But um, now um, I spent the last, pretty much last two and a half years just in trying to enjoy him, mm-hmm. you know, because he's because he's already, he got, he he has the package. And, you know, more than ever now is just more of critiquing small things and kind of giving him a coach's perspective. Uh, but um, it's been a joy. I mean, and, you know, honestly, you know, I actually got a little like, semi-emotional today thinking, like, man, I got, like, three games left at max, four games left at max of coaching Jake. You know, I've been pretty much co- coaching him since he was four years old. Mm-hmm. Uh, football as well. I coached, I coached, I helped, I helped with the football team as well. So um, it's been a pleasure, man, and, you know, I'm really thankful, you know, and that's really what we preach in practice to be thankful because there's so many teams that are not playing. So true. You know, so we, you know, we're, we, we preach that a lot of being thankful and being, you know, gracious. And I'll end with this on, uh, end on this note with you, coach, you know, I've had people come up to me and say, wow, do you think coach Coop's going to be a head coach one day? And you sort of touched on a little bit where you are right now, getting a chance to coach your son as an assistant. I, I'm sure there've been some, people that have reached out from other schools may not name names here that have said, is that something that one day you would want to do? Or do you just, is the enjoyment, the fact that you don't have all that pressure weighing in on you, you're the front. If you win, you don't get the credit the kids do. If you lose, the blame goes to you as the head man often. So is that something that one day would you ever say, never say never? How do you kind of look at it now here sitting at it being, what are you, this is your 13th year as an assistant? Yeah. Um, It's it's actually a funny question because, um, Coach Harris has always given me head coach responsibility. So well, I've you coached a game a couple of years ago when he was sick, in all seriousness, right? Against Kemsville, I believe it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah actually. Um, um, but like I said, he he his ego is so minute that you know, those losses that he felt he felt, I felt them the same way. You know, we've always kind of done it together. Um, so you know, I've always had to take up for, you know. Anytime there was an issue with a parent or somebody said, oh, he, he can't coach, I'm like, well, I actually had half of my hand in that as well. Um, there has been opportunities for me to go. I mean, it's hard to leave Green Run. I'm going to be honest with you. Once you're a stallion, you pretty much always a stallion. And the situation has been great, you know. Um, so, I mean, but uh, I don't know. It, it's, 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 it's kind of a tricky question. I mean, I'm looking forward to know it. I'm gonna be honest with you. I mean, that's that's about you know maybe like five it's five or six years from now. But those that don't know what is Coach Harris's son. So correct, correct. <laughs> I'm sorry. All for really all when we see him play. Yeah, I mean, and that it's crazy, but like time flies so yeah. quick, and I I still enjoy it, you know, and you know, hopefully I uh, will be still enjoying it when he gets around. Um, but I mean, you never know. You never know. Well, it's been fun hanging with Mr. Coop uh, here. Mr. Cooper, that's Roderick Cooper, the head assistant coach, associate head coach, if you will, for Green Run, helping out Kenneth Harris, his two sons. Jacob Cooper, the big game tonight, the senior, 34 points, leads his team to the region final coming up on Saturday. Trey, the freshman as well. Uh, mm. Coach, this has been a real pleasure and a treat. Uh, enjoy going in depth on the background of the history for you. And uh, best wishes to you and your stallions and the whole crew and the family coming up on Saturday. And we'll see you then uh, masked up, all right? Sir, you too. Enjoy yourself. Appreciate you, man.